there are many fascinating mysteries in this universe and eclipses are one of them. Wishing you all happiness, clarity, and freedom today. We are literally on top of the world right now. Check this out. Check how high up I am. We're out here on the mountaintop talking about eclipses. And as a matter of fact, we are in eclipse season. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in eclipse season and this is such a great magical time to be alive on this planet. So if you're alive right now, shout out to you because it really is amazing and it really is spectacular to be in a human body <laughs> On this planet at this time okay there are lots of magical mysteries in this universe and eclipses are just one of my favorites okay what's more mysterious than the light getting shut out in the middle of the day right that's crazy but if you don't know an eclipse is when the Sun and the moon are kind of in direct alignment with the earth in the middle usually okay if this is earth the moon is usually like up here and the sun's here but with an eclipse it's a straight line so they're all the sun the earth and the moon are all in direct alignment and on april 30th 2022 we have a solar eclipse in the sign of taurus a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of taurus so a solar eclipse is when we have the earth right here and then the moon is here and then the sun is here so the moon is closer to the sun than the earth is so we got that solar eclipse new moon going on in Taurus so in this video I'm just gonna be talking about which zodiac signs are being pinged by this major eclipse going on what you can do about it what to expect from these energies I'm also gonna be talking about the other zodiac signs that are pinged, like the planets that are being pinged from this eclipse, okay? So buckle up, stay tuned. Let's talk about which zodiac signs are going to be most heavily affected by this eclipse, okay? If you are an Aquarius, if you are a Leo, if you are a Scorpio, or if you are a Taurus, put your seatbelt on, okay? Put your seatbelt on right now because I'm telling you, you are going to be in for a wild ride. And matter of fact, you actually have been in, you have been going on a wild ride for a long time now. Okay, ever since Saturn entered Aquarius, this fixed cross has been pinged. So if you are a heavy fixed sign person, like I said, Scorpio, a lot of planets in Scorpio, Taurus, especially those two for the eclipse, because that's the actual eclipse axis right now. But Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, and Taurus, okay? These are the four fixed signs. Scorpio being fixed water, Taurus being fixed earth, Aquarius being fixed air, and Leo being fixed fire. Okay, these are the fixed signs. So if you have a lot of planets in these signs, buckle up, put the seatbelt on. There's gonna be a lot of energies affecting you during this time. Okay, a lot of energies are going to be coming in and affecting you during this time. So, which planets are also being affected? Which planets are involved in this solar eclipse? And actually, two weeks after this solar eclipse is the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. As the moon makes its way around, we know, we know what the moon does. But, pretty much, Uranus is a big factor in this eclipse because Uranus is in Taurus right now and Saturn is in Aquarius. Okay, Uranus in Taurus, Saturn in Aquarius, and it has been this way ever since 2020, right? When Saturn entered Aquarius. So it's been like this for a while. We've had this Saturn Uranus square going on for a while now, so we're used to this. At least I am super used to this by now. And what's really important to do is look at your birth chart, look at your rising sign and figure out which houses are being affected by this eclipse, okay? And if you don't know what the houses are, your rising sign is your first house, 
and then the, the, the next zodiac sign after your rising sign would be your second house but that's actually not how I do it I do 30 degrees after the rising sign is my first house and then 30 degrees after that is the second house there's different systems that you can do but that's how I do it but basically your houses represent all your aspects of life first house is you second house is related to your belongings or possessions income I'm not gonna go through the houses but basically my second house is being pinged in Taurus because I'm Pisces rising at 27 degrees of Pisces so yeah my income my financial stability my um, possessions you know food those kind of things these basic things that we have in life um, it's being shook up right now with Saturn squaring this house in my 11th house and I also talked about this before but the Saturn transit through my 11th house is showing me that you need to choose the right people to be around okay a lot of people disappeared from my life in 2020 a lot of people disappeared from my life I kind of became a loner I don't really have any friends I made a video on that go check it out I don't have any friends um, go check that out but yeah my 11th house and second house is being pinged from this eclipse so check out your birth chart birth chart check out which houses are being pinged by this eclipse and you will be set you will be ready to go but overall uh, houses aside planets aside all these things aside eclipse season is just a highly mysterious highly energetic time period on planet earth and it has been long debated in the astrological community the astronomical community whether or not eclipses are a positive or a negative occurrence right is it a highly positive thing is it a highly negative thing we don't really know and in my opinion it is not either one it is not good nor bad it is literally the yin and the yang the yin and the yang right the lunar eclipse with the full moon and the solar eclipse with the new moon yin and yang it all makes perfect sense good and bad light and dark we know this we know this about this universe that there's good and there's bad there's light and there's dark and it really I mean just depends how you look at it the dark could be good the light could be bad yeah it depends how you look at it but duality is a thing in this universe and I'm actually learning a lot about duality and polarity right now and how yes polarity and duality are, are necessary these are necessary things polarity is, is a necessary thing without polarity the earth wouldn't spin you know we have the north and south poles but at the same time it's really just how you look at it right everything really is one we are all really one yin and yang just one together but polarity is necessary for some reason I'm not really sure it's complicated but that's going pretty deep but eclipse season is always a highly energetic time you are going to be having certain feelings about certain things and oftentimes it lines up with the houses the astrological houses and your life but overall it's just gonna be a high energy you're gonna have things coming up you're gonna it's gonna be a big time in your life especially if, if like I said if, especially if you are a heavy fixed sign person I have four planets in Aquarius and I have one planet in Leo and those are all my fixed sign placements I also have Pisces rising and Saturn and Gemini, Mars and Pluto and Sagittarius, Moon and Virgo. So I got a lot of mutable as well. Mutable and fixed is what I am. So this is going to be pinging my chart, the fixed section mainly, you know. But what else was I going to say? We have a lot of sextiles aspecting this eclipse, okay? In Pisces, to be exact. In Pisces, we have Jupiter, Neptune, Venus and Mars all sextile to Taurus where the Sun and the moon are or will be on April 30th obviously and Uranus as well and by the way 
forgot to mention, what makes an eclipse an eclipse is that the nodes of the moon are by the sun. Okay, the nodes of the moon are by the sun, which means that when the moon hits those nodes with the sun, it's in that exact alignment. It's going to be completely dark out during the day with that solar eclipse, depending on where you are. So the north node is in Taurus and the south node is in Scorpio. And the nodes are very key because they are kind of like activators. They kind of enhance things. I'm not too sure about the nodes and what they all mean, but I know they are important. And the north node is what, in this life, we are supposed to kind of move towards, right? We're supposed to move towards the north node and achieve these certain things, or not achieve, but just kind of move in this direction in life, in this life at least. And the south node is said to be your past life, what you did in your past life that you are familiar with things that are familiar, you've already been there and done that, so it's time to move on to the opposite sign, because they're always exactly opposite, and it's time to move in this direction rather than the direction we were at in the past life. Obviously no one knows this for sure, but that is just the, the story of the nodes, what goes on with the nodes. So with this eclipse season overall, what you want to do is just brace yourself. Just understand that there is going to be a lot of energy going on. And I've already been feeling a lot of the energy going on. I don't know if you've been feeling it, but just the past month even has been crazy. Has been super crazy. The past six months have been crazy. The past three years have been crazy. But it's all really just escalating all this energy because there's so much change going on. There's so much change going on, and this is forcing us to change ourselves. There's so much energy coming in that is forcing us to change, forcing us to change the way we live, change the things we do every day, things we eat, the, the way we think. There's so much change going on, and it's all just going to be activated again by this eclipse. So buckle up, prepare yourself, brace yourself for lots of feelings to come up within you. They could be hard feelings, they could be blissful feelings. You never know. But just be aware, be prepared, and know that there is going to be things that will probably come up in your life. You're gonna have feelings, emotions, all these things. You're gonna feel great one second, and the next second you're gonna feel like crap. It's all just how it is, it's the way it is and just understand that there is so much change going on on this planet and it really is an exciting time to be alive overall it is an exciting time to be alive okay everything else aside it is exciting because change is exciting and movement is exciting that's why we're here we're here to experience we're here to experience the change to experience all the energy and to grow and to evolve and to look back with gratitude and appreciation on our journey. Just to experience the journey, simple as that. So, this was kind of all over the place, I know, but I just wanted to talk about the eclipses. I wanted to talk about what to prepare for, how to prepare, what to expect from these eclipses, or from the solar eclipse in particular, but also mainly with the solar eclipse this side of the eclipse is going to be about more of a fresh new energy obviously new moon in Taurus we know is about starting things starting new things we have this fresh new energy coming in so expect that as well good time to set intentions check out my community post about Taurus where I set my Taurus intentions but it is a good time to kind of adopt new mindsets start new things start new intentions as it always is with the new moons right so that's that's like usual with new moons so thank you all so much for watching i love all of you guys you are all wonderful and appreciated spectacular and i want you to like the video subscribe comment and stay tuned for the next one and remember make it a great day or not the choice is yours